Over the past 10 years, thousands of landlords have left London to buy rental properties elsewhere. And in 2024 so far, house prices in the capital have fallen by nearly 5%, making them the worst performing in England. So what is going on? Why are landlords leaving the capital? And what does this mean for the rental market? Well, since we started in property, we've seen four major changes that have affected landlords in London. So in this video, I'll explain what those four changes are and why they've resulted in landlords leaving the capital. Plus, I'll explain what impact this is having on landlords, renters and investors across the country. So in order to do that, I need to take you back a few years when all of this first began. In 2015, the government was coming under serious pressure to slow down the activity of property investors. Because seven years on from the financial crisis, the inequality was becoming painfully obvious. Investors with lots of cash and the ability to get cheap financing were doing very well, while ordinary home buyers were struggling. One solution they came up with was a stamp duty surcharge. So from 2016, investors had to pay an extra 3% tax when buying a property on top of what someone would pay if they only owned a single home. The bandings have changed since then, but let's look at what this surcharge means for investors today. An average buyer in the UK buys a home for £260,000, so they would pay stamp duty of just £500, or if they were a qualifying first-time buyer, nothing at all. An average investor buying the same property would pay £8,300. But the average London property price, according to Rightmove, is £725,000. So a non-first-time buyer would pay £23,750 of stamp duty, which is already a lot. But an investor needs to pay the extra 3%. So that means that they would pay a whopping £45,500. That amount of tax would virtually buy you a whole house in some parts of the country. So that extra 3% meant that investments in London just didn't add up in the same way they used to. Especially when you consider that investors were coming under pressure for another reason too. So as we saw, the average London property price is roughly three times the UK average. Average London rents are higher too, but only just more than double the UK average, according to Rightmove. So when you calculate the yield from a property, that's the rent divided by the purchase price, this means that it's hard to make a decent return from London property, especially when the purchase price is pushed up even further by the extra stamp duty. For many investors though, that lower return has been a price they're willing to pay because they believe London property prices will grow faster and they see it as a safe investment because London is always in such demand. But investors can't stomach making a negative return. And that's the position they could easily have been pushed into by another change announced in 2015. While they were in landlord bashing mode, the government made a change to the tax system that meant an individual landlord's mortgage interest could no longer be fully claimed as a cost of doing business. Once this took effect, it pushed up people's tax bills, even though they weren't bringing in any more rent than before, making their investments less profitable. Again, this change applied across the country, but the bigger your mortgage, the more you were affected. And where are you likely to have a big mortgage? Well, in the same place the properties are the most expensive, London. As a result, lots of rentals suddenly became unprofitable. So it just didn't make sense for investors to buy there anymore. But let's step back for a moment and look at why London prices are so much higher than everywhere else, because that gives us our third clue for why investors have been leaving the capital. In the aftermath of the 2008 financial crisis, property prices across the UK fell by an average of 15%. London wasn't immune from this. Prices fell just as far, if not further. But what made London different is how quickly it recovered. If you'd bought the average UK property at the peak in October 2007, you would still have been underwater in the summer of 2014. But in London, you would have been back in the black by the start of 2011. And from there, London prices went on a crazy run up while the rest of the country pretty much stood still. As this graph shows, London prices had been pulling away from the rest of the country since the early 1990s. But by 2016, the difference had stretched to an extreme level. And from there, the London growth rapidly ran out of steam. You could blame it on Brexit nerves, but it was going to happen anyway. By 2016, prices had hit a point where investments just didn't add up anymore. The only way to make them add up would be to increase rents, but these had hit a ceiling too. By 2016, the average Londoner was spending more than 50% of their salary on rent, which just isn't sustainable. Take all this 
and add on the two extra tax costs that we've already seen, and London was a whole lot less appealing than it used to be. This took investors some time to come to terms with. They liked the safety and familiarity of London, and were used to seeing prices rise fast. When we were talking to clients in 2016, they had a London mindset, and we had to persuade them to invest in places like Manchester, which has turned out to dominate the capital growth table ever since. But as time has gone on, we've seen this London bias fade, and from the start, they expect to buy outside the southeast and they know that they need to get to grips with areas they're not familiar with. So that explains why new purchases in London have collapsed. But now there's a new factor that's causing London landlords to rush for the exit. Remember that landlords with large mortgages were the most affected by the government's tax changes. Well, over the past few years, there's been another big change, which has been the huge increase in mortgage rates. And guess who's impacted by that the most? Once again, it's the people with the biggest mortgages, aka London landlords. So the tax changes have made London investments barely profitable. Growth in prices have slowed down for the past eight years, and now the cost of those big mortgages has doubled or sometimes tripled. No wonder landlords are deciding to get out. The exodus has been so big, the estate agent Foxton's credited all the extra activity with boosting their profits, and 37% of London landlords are apparently thinking of selling, compared to 17% across the country as a whole. For tenants, unfortunately the knock-on effect of all this has been that rents have been rising faster in London than anywhere else, due to the supply of rental properties falling, and also due to the landlords who are sticking around putting up their rents as much as they can to keep their heads above water. But what does this mean for London house prices? Well, this mass exodus has sent them sharply downwards. Official land registry data shows that house prices in the capital were 4.4% lower in March 2024 compared with the year before, much more than the 0.2% fall across Britain as a whole. But as we've already seen, trends come to an end. London has had the best of times, now it's having the worst of times. Yet with rents increasing and the ability to pick properties up at a discount from struggling owners who are desperate to get out, is there now an opportunity to be buying in London again? Well, it's not the craziest argument you'll ever hear. The best profits always come from going against the grain. And I've personally had great results from buying in London in 2011, when everyone was still freaked out by the post-financial crisis collapse, or by buying in the Midlands and the Northwest in 2015 before anyone believed in its growth story. So with London property prices falling and rents still rising, there will come a time when it makes sense to invest in the capital again. But for me, that time is not yet. It comes down to that ratio between London and the rest of the country that we saw earlier. As London prices fall, and the rest of the country stagnates, it's becoming relatively better value than it was, but the ratio is still historically very high. For me, that suggests that growth will continue to be faster outside London, like it has been for the past eight years. And with rental yields being higher outside London too, just not seeing an argument to go back in. Data from mortgage lenders is showing that those buyers who'd previously been looking at London are now buying in the Northwest and Yorkshire, which largely matches the areas that I'm buying in personally. But for a full list of exactly which we're focusing on and where you can find the best investments around the UK, watch this video next.